Visit SayRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with SayRight. In this video, we're going to show you how to assemble your components on the workhorse servo motor and then how to assemble the workhorse motor on an industrial tabletop. Your workhorse servo motor will come with two pulleys. This is the pulley for the V-belt. Sayerite doesn't currently sell a sewing machine that has a V-belt, but if you're putting the workhorse on a uh, different sewing machine that has a V-belt, this is the pulley you'll want to install. This pulley is cogged. This is typically what is installed for almost all of the Sayerite sewing machines. So let's install this one first, and then we'll install the V-belt pulley. Turn the shaft of the motor so the keyway is almost at 12 o'clock. That way you can insert the key that's included into the slot and just let it rest and it won't fall out. So we're going to match up this keyway with the uh, key in the shaft. The set screws go in towards the motors. Line it up and it should easily push on to the shaft. Make sure it's lined up all the way against the bushing of the shaft and then lock down the set screws with a two millimeter Allen key. Insert the flat washer, insert the lock washer, and then the lock nut. Grasp the pulley and use a half inch or 13 millimeter socket and then lock the nut down. It doesn't have to be super tight, it just should be up against the pulley. Now your cogged pulley is installed on your brand new workhorse servo motor. Now we're going to install the V-belt pulley if you don't uh, use one of the Sayrite machines with the cogged belt. This requires a V-belt. And what we'll do is we'll slide this on without the key in place. Notice the key's been removed from the shaft. And we'll line up the keyway with the keyway in the shaft. Now all we need to do is take the key with some needle nose and push it into the opening and it's installed correctly. Take the flat washer, install it on the shaft, lock washer, and then the lock nut and thread it into position. Grasp the pulley and use a half inch or 13 millimeter socket and securely um, lock the nut onto the end of the pulley. It doesn't need to be super tight, just uh, up against the pulley right there, and you are done. We're going to turn the workhorse all the way around and we're going to concentrate on this spring. Okay, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take this spring that's on this little indent and we're going to move it to the indent that's closer to the linkage treadle, which is attached over here. It's pretty easy. Just take some new nose pliers, lift it up and over the pip and then put it on that next groove and lift it up and over and back on and now you have more spring pressure which is uh, better for performance. Okay, and before we uh, mount it to the machine, we're gonna lift this up and uh, put on this, uh, this is the receiver for the cover and there are three screws and three holes and you want this top part up here to be up towards the top of the motor and just drive these screws in loosely. So leave them loose so that it can be moved around and we'll put them in this slot and we'll put one in this slot. Sometimes this upper bracket may be a little bit askew. The manufacturer sometimes doesn't screw them on perfectly straight. So what I do is I release the three screws on this side and the three on the other side, which can be kind of hard to unscrew. And then I push the bracket that direction. Let me show you. So all six of them are now loose and I just take my fingers and I push it back all the way until it just basically runs into those screws. Then I usually, what I do is I lock this front one down hard and then over here on this side as I'm still pulling back, I lock this one really hard and then I lock all the other four left over. And now we're assured that that bracket is on nice and straight and we can mount it to the tabletop. Okay, so now we're ready to mount the workhorse servo motor on our industrial table, and we have the V pulley installed for a V belt. Let's get started. 
Two of the three carriage bolts are inserted in the leftmost holes. Place a washer, lock washer, and then a nut on each of the two bolts and thread them roughly halfway. The motor may be mounted and rested in position for the insertion of the third carriage bolt. Finger tighten the nuts on the two carriage bolts. Then place the final washer, lock washer, and nut on the third carriage bolt. Finger tighten it as well. You can now adjust the workhorse servo motor left or right so that it lines up with the belt slot in the table. Once the motor is lined up appropriately, all of the nuts on the carriage bolts can be tightened. Our V-belt is too short, but we're using the power twist belt, and links can be added. Belt tension can be adjusted via this screw. The motor can be adjusted forward or backwards to get perfect belt tension. Once good belt tension is achieved, you can tighten the set screw. Now the belt cover can be adjusted so that it aligns with the belt and the three set screws tightened. Slide the belt cover onto the belt cover bracket. Be sure the belt does not touch the belt cover. All that's left now is to reattach the linkage bar from your existing treadle to the motor operation lever. The workhorse is a 550 watt, three quarter horsepower servo motor designed for continuous use on industrial sewing machines. Speed setting ranges from 400 to 3600 stitches per minute. Now you have the torque and power to punch through thick assemblies and yet you have the super slow speed control so that you can stitch one stitch at a time without the machine taking off on you as it would with the clutch motor. Order the Sayerite Workhorse Servo Motor today from Sayerite. Thanks for watching.